What is going on everybody? It is Dream from Dream Talks here and today what we are going to do is preview the week number eight matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets. Can you believe we're already halfway done with the NFL season and the Jags aren't completely without hope? I think most of this video is going to be is going to be me discussing the Jaguars' playoff hopes and discussing, you know, how realistic it is that the Jags really make it to the postseason right now, sitting at a 3-4 and four record. And, of course, what they need to do in order to continue that discussion is beat the New York Jets. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus New York Jets, week number 8, preview. So clearly if you watched last night's game between the Patriots and the Jets, Sam Darnold struggled really, really bad. Like, really bad. Like, he looked awful out there. And obviously the Patriots defense has been probably the best defense in the league thus far this season. And, you know, maybe you can contribute to that. But I really am not that worried about the Jets heading into this game. Um, Trey Herndon's going to have to step up, obviously, because, you know, Robbie Anderson and A.J. Boye should be matching up. But the Jets do have a pretty stout wide receiver core, and they need to be able to shut those two guys down onto the outside and make sure that this pass rush gets after Sam Darnold. But obviously, the main thing we need to worry about is Le'Veon Bell. And Le'Veon Bell is a guy that the Jacksonville Jaguars defense has had success against every time they've played him, whether that be in the regular season with Pittsburgh or in the playoffs in 2017. Uh, the Jags always seem to do well against Le'Veon Bell, and this run defense needs to continue to play well and make sure that it's not going to allow like a Christian McCaffrey game. Obviously, it's stepped up big time uh, against the Bengals, only allowing 10 yards to Joe Mixon. Or it was 2 yards, 2 yards on 10 carries to Joe Mixon. So we need to do the same thing to Le'Veon Bell and bring that same energy that we brought out last week and this offense I don't think is going to have to score a lot of points but you know the offense needs to continue to develop and play really well. Sony Michelle had a big game against the uh, Jets last week so hopefully Leonard Fournette can continue you know his big season pitching the numbers and make sure that he has a big game against the Jets as well. And this is a must win game for the Jags. They come into this game against the Jets after beating the Cincinnati Bengals two games that you know the Jags feel like the better team in. You know, the Jags were favored in the Bengals game. The Jags are, of course, favored in this Jets game as well. Four and a half point favorites. And they were favorites against the Saints as well. Uh, the Jags ended up losing that one by one possession after allowing a Saints touchdown. But the Jags should be able to go out there and win this game, I think, pretty handily with this defense and how this offense is playing. Now, after this is where things get tough, not only with the games, but also with what the Jaguars are going to be doing at the quarterback position. Now, Nick Foles is the biggest topic of discussion amongst Jaguar fans right now, and so is Gardner Minshew. You know, people are making the argument, why not stick with the hot hand? Why not keep Gardner Minshew in there all season? Why would you put Nick Foles out there? And then you got the other people that are saying, put Nick Foles in there. We signed him to be the guy. That's our quarterback. Once he's healthy, once he's 100%, and as soon as he can throw the football, get him out there on the field and make sure that he can lead us to some victories. And I see both sides of the argument. Now, I kind of addressed this, you know, at length, you know, pretty good in my uh, recap video uh, with our game against the Bengals. And I talked about how I really think Nick Foles should when he's ready to play, be thrusted in there and play some football. You know, some people don't agree with that. Some people see that as like a Tom Coughlin type of a move. Like, totally, you know, this is why we're doing this and we have to do it and we're going to do it. And, you know, it's by the book, all this and all that. But I think it makes the most sense to play Nick Foles once he's ready. Gardner Minshew is showing flashes that he is the future of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he is the guy that can take this team from Nick Foles once the time is ready and, you know, maybe even compete with Foles during camp next offseason to be the starting quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I think as of right now, I think Nick Foles gives you a, not necessarily a better chance to win, but he gives you a chance to win. He has the moxie. He's been there. And, you know, if you ever want Nick Foles, you want him in crunch time. You want him when you really, really need him. And these next three weeks following the Jets game is when the Jaguars 
really, really need some Nick Foles magic. Obviously, you got Minshew magic, Minshew mania, and, you know, we haven't seen what he can do with that at an NFL level when the Jaguars are trying to make a playoff push. We've seen Nick Foles obviously win a Super Bowl MVP. We've seen him, you know, drive the Eagles deep into the playoffs. We've seen him come in in real, real crunch time and do some great things for the Eagles, and hopefully he can do the same thing with the Jaguars, and this is an opportunity for him to do that and take the Jags to the playoffs. Because like I said, these next three games, they aren't going to be a walk in the park because we have literally three straight division matchups. That sucks ass because division matchups, no matter how you slice it, are always going to be competitive and it's always going to be complicated. You never really know 100% who's going to come out with that victory. And honestly, I would like to see Nick Foles play in those games. Now, the Jags have yet to face the Colts this season, and, you know, Minshew beat the Titans, and Minshew, you know, almost got them in the situation where they, you know, could have beat the Texans. But let's thrust in a new quarterback in there, Nick Foles, a guy that they had the game plan for. You know, you obviously have the tape of Gardner Minshew all season long, but, you know, throwing Nick Foles in there in these division games that they need to win in order to make a playoff push is going to be really, really huge. And I think Nick Foles is that type of player, and he's that type of guy, and I think he gives the Jaguars the best opportunity to really make that playoff push, especially because after that, you know, the schedule's kind of easy. The Jaguars do have a matchup against the Chargers, who is a team that they usually struggle against, but they are look like they're kind of going downhill, so hopefully the Jaguars can capitalize on that. It really comes down to winning the games you're supposed to win and winning these games that are going to be up in the air and really, really close. So the Jags start off with a matchup against the Houston Texans in London, and, you know, Minshew's going to have to play in that one. Uh, and I think that Minshew has never played in London, but the Jaguar team, you know, there's some guys on there that, you know, are used to playing in London. Guys like Clayus Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, J- not Jalen Ramsey, silly tree, Jalen Ramsey, what are you even fucking talking about? AJ Boye, you know, the list goes on, Miles Jack, you know, they've played in London They've done their fair share of time there. So, you know, it's going to be one of those games where, you know, the guys that are really experienced in London are going to have to step up. And then, you know, Houston's not a team that goes to London every year. So it's going to be a matchup to where uh, they're going to have to adjust. And some of the Jaguar players that have been there for a couple of years, you know, they're obviously used to used to what they need to do in order to win these London games. The Jaguars are 3-3 three and three in London, and this gives the Jags a, a slight edge in this one. I think the Jags are going to be able to put together a lot better game against Houston, and they were so, so close to getting that victory against them in week number two, and hopefully they could come that close yet again, and this time hopefully capitalize with a victory and you know really just kind of go off of things that are in our favor and make sure that we are in the discussion, we beat Houston, and then we got to go play the Colts. The Colts are going to be hard. Jacoby Brissett's had a really good year, and I've been real vocal, really not on the YouTube, but on Twitter and, like, to, you know, people, my friends. You know, I really like Jacoby Brissett, and I really like to see, I really like what I'm seeing from him, and I think that he is the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. You know, it's kind of like a Jacksonville Jaguar thing. With the exception of, I kind of hope, you know, Gardner's brought along a little bit later. But Jacoby Brissett is a guy that, you know, played in New England, spent some time on the bench. You know, a real learning experience. It was a year or two ago, you know, I think it was 2017, you know, when he had to play all those games. And, you know, he got sacked a lot. He was been, he was put in bad situations. And, you know, he was able to learn from that, take bits and pieces, and really put together a really solid season. Beating the Kansas City Chiefs, beating the Texans last week. I think the Colts are a real contender to be a really really good football team it's and you know this is with Jacoby Brissett too because you even imagine if Andrew Luck played I think this Colts team would be even better than they are now so that game is going to be competitive no matter what so hopefully the Jaguars can find a way to do that and hopefully Tennessee is just one of those games that the Jags go out and take care of and we can sweep the Tennessee Titans and that would be completely and utterly insane and you know because we haven't done it since I don't even know when the last time we swept the Titans is, but I know that the Titans have swept us the last two seasons, so hopefully we can get a little bit of redemption and sweep them. So these next four weeks are going to really determine the Jaguars' season, and it's going to come down to a lot of barn burner games, a lot of must-win games, a lot of games that the Jaguars really, really, really need to win in order to make that postseason push. And whether it's going to be with Gardner Minshew or Nick Foles is yet to be seen, 
but hopefully whoever's under center for the Jaguars is going to be able to go out there and get it done and lead this team to the promised land because I think the playoffs are still very, very possible, especially in the AFC. I think that the AFC is obviously significantly weaker than the NFC. The Jags have more paths to the playoffs than they would if they were in the NFC, and the fact that they're sitting at 3-4 and four and still in the discussion of the playoffs uh, says a lot about the whole conference. You know, everybody's kind of beating up on everybody. It's kind of like in fantasy when you have like a four and two record right now, and you're sitting in a league with a bunch of guys that have, t- you know, a four and two records as well, and one guy that's six and zero. Oh, and then you look in the other division, and it's like the guy that leads it is three and three, and there's a bunch of two and four teams behind him, and two teams from that division are going to make the playoffs, and two teams from that division are going to make the playoffs. It's kind of like that, you know. It look that if you're an NFC team. <laughs> And, you know, you're in the thick of things battling. You're a 2-3 loss team. And you look at, like, some of the records that these division winners in the AFC have and some of these records of these wild card teams are having, you really envy the AFC. But hopefully the Jags can put it together, put together some uh, active win streaks and be able to lead this team to the playoffs. It all starts with beating the New York Jets and then three real tough divisional games after that. This is where the Jaguars season is going to be determined. Now, if the Jags lost to the Bengals last week, the season would have already been a wrap. It already would have been over. They would have had no momentum. It would have been terrible. It would have been awful. But good thing they did beat the Bengals because now we have a little bit of hope. And hopefully Gardner Minshew can beat the New York Jets to keep the Jags' playoff hopes alive. And that was my Jaguars versus Jets preview. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, chat links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Dream Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to so get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.